Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Somalia got independence. In 1940, when Italian troops invaded British Somaliland and ejected the British, the invading Italians occupied major parts of the British East Africa Protectorate bordering Juba land around the towns of Moyale and Buna. Britain later regained control of British Somaliland and conquered Italian Somaliland. In November 1945, during the Potsdam Conference, the United Nations granted Italy trusteeship of Italian Somaliland under close supervision and on the condition that Somalia would gain independence within 10 years as proposed by the Somali Youth League SYL, and other Somali political organizations such as Hizbiya Dijil Mirifu Somali HDMS, and the Somali National League SNL. This agreement was not honored as British Somaliland remained a British protectorate until 1960. In 1958, there was a referendum in Djibouti which was known as French Somaliland to decide whether or not to join the Somali Republic or to remain with France. The referendum turned out in favor of a continued association with France, mainly as a result of the combined votes of the Afro-ethnic group and the resident Europeans. However, there were allegations of widespread election rigging with the French expelling thousands of Somalis before the referendum. The majority of those who voted against were Somalis who were strongly in favor of joining a united Somalia as proposed by Mahmoud Harbi, vice president of the government council. Sadly, Harbi was eventually killed in a plane crash two years later. Djibouti finally gained its independence from France in 1977 and Hassan Gouled Abtidon, a Somali who had campaigned for a year's vote in the referendum of 1958, became Djibouti's first president from 1977 to 1991. After much struggle, Somalia eventually gained independence on the 1st of July 1960. It was on the same day that two territories united to form the Somali Republic but operated within the boundaries of Italy and Britain. Abdullahi Isa Muhammad, Muhammad Haji Ibrahim Egal, and other members of the trusteeship and protectorate government formed a government alongside the Speaker of the Somali Union Act, Haji Bashir Ismail Yusuf, who emerged as President of the Somali National Assembly, and Aden Abdullah Osman Dar. President of Somali Republic. Abdul Rashid Ali Shemake served as Prime Minister and later became President from 1967 to 1969. On the 20th of July 1961, after a popular referendum, the Somalians authorized a new constitution that was first drafted in 1960. In 1967, Shemake then appointed Muhammad Haji Ibrahim Egal as Prime Minister. Egal would later become the president of the autonomous Somaliland region in northwestern Somalia. On the 15th of October 1969, while paying a visit to the northern town of Las Anod, Somalia's president, Abdul Rashid Ali Shemake, was shot dead by a policeman. His assassination was quickly followed by a military coup d'etat on the 21st of October 1969, the day after his funeral. Four years later, Somalia and Ethiopia waged a war over the Ogaden region. General Mohamed Siad Barre was the head of government at the time and held power for more than two decades. As he tried to invade the Ogaden region, he also attempted to regain other territories like portions of Djibouti, Kenya, and Ethiopia that the Somalis had lost over the years. Two years after the war, he passed a new constitution into law 
and ruled as a dictator under a single party system. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.